right, everyone, welcome to the negative space category video. So I'm going to start off with three photos I've taken that I think encapsulate what I was thinking of when I had negative space in mind. This first one here is a picture of an altar in a house, uh, well, at an apartment, I think it was, or some, something like that, uh, in the foyer of a building in Hocotepec, Mexico. This was just the way that the lighting um, fell into the building. And I really, with this one, you can see how the, the absence of information in the dark black areas gives the areas that have information shape and form. And that also serves to highlight the importance of those areas. So in this image, negative space is giving form to the non-negative areas. This next one of the uh, horse trainer, the negative space is working to set the horse trainer apart from everything else. We have horse trainer, horse, and dirt. And that's all that's illuminated in this scene. So the negative space doesn't lend form, but it does create an isolation. So in, that, in both of these images, what that means is that the negative space is doing something to advance the overall meaning of the photo. And in this last one, which is the opposite, because this is a white negative space as opposed to black, what the negative space here is doing is serving to just create a minimalist image where uh, actually I would say both of these things are negative space. It's just black and just white. There's basically no tonality in the um, bush there that's, that was taken. Uh, this was a photo taken in the f fresh snow. And um, so basically the... Um, the lack of data in both places or the overabundance of data in the, the white space just creates form. And so the entire image just becomes the interplay between negative spaces. Now, the reason some of you might have wondered throughout the course of this week is why didn't I show you these samples before the contest started? Because I wanted you to interpret the prompts your own way. And I didn't want every image that showed up to look like mine. I wanted them to be your work. So let's jump into this first one here. So the negative space in this image is the sky. And I think that that does a lot to um, rein in the, um, the shape, to constrain the shape, that's what I mean, of the mountain. And then because of the deep shadows on the lower left, what you end up really with is this zigzag stripe. There's a let's let's uh, let's treat the lower left shadows uh, as being negative space. So there's this horizontal, this vertical stripe from top from left to lower right that ends with the tree, which then creates another horizontal stripe that's that triangle of rock and scree along the bottom right. So you end up basically with a diagonal bar and a triangle with a smaller yellow triangle on it inside of two generally triangular negative spaces. So really wonderful use of shape. In this image also could be just as successful in black and white as color with the exception that not that the color really gives that yellow tree a good pop. So um, I think overall image structure and composition and look, this is a, a, a successful image and very pleasing to look at. This next one really uses negative space very well. It, the negative space here is made up of what I would assume is a snowstorm throughout, or maybe clouds. And so that negative space, as we talked about with the examples I started with, gives shape and place and form to the information space. So really good use of negative space in this image. And I really like how much emptiness there is in the top two thirds of this image. Normally, um, designers, people who do page layout and things like that would say, don't have that much blank space at the top of a frame, leave the top third empty. But I think in this image, it having that much empty space is really beneficial. So this image, um, I really liked how tight the composition is in this image. However, doesn't embrace the negative space prompt. 
There's, um, there's a little bit of negative space in the darkness of the trees, but it doesn't become an element that lends to the overall structure of the image. And also, with the previous two images, they couldn't exist without the negative space. Take the trees out of this image and it would exist in a not meaningfully changed way. So the importance of the negative space is to have an element that makes the image. If it hadn't been for the negative space being there, the image couldn't possibly exist. So this one, I would assume that the sky and the grass are the negative spaces. And I, one of the things I really like about this image is the comparison by placing them next to each other of the um, dead tree and the live tree. And I also like the shadow and the light play in this and the green and the blue color scheme that's pretty much just two-tone in that regard. So um, really liked a lot of the way that the subject and the image elements are being structured next to each other in this image. So here's one that I struggled with a bit because there's a lot going right in this image. The negative space of the mountains and the negative space of the sky are really well used as image elements. The horizon line is perfect. The little ship or whatever it is, probably actually gigantic ship out in the distance on the horizon gives a little bit of visual interest over to the left side in juxtaposition to the visual interest of the fishermen on the right side. Were I to have the ability, if this were my photo and I had the ability to go take it again, I'd look at recropping this or reframing it a little bit. If we brought the bottom of the image up so that there's this flat area here which could be a boat launch or something like that next to this little um, little tiny pier. Uh, if we brought that bottom up just a little bit to crop that out, then what we the negative space would become a much more dominant element within the image. And then the data space, which would be the water, that what remains of the pier, and then the fishermen and the, and the ship, would become secondary to that, but would become the image made uh, made important because of the negative space. And that's solely because of the rebalancing of the proportions of negative space to information space. In terms of use of black and white tone and textures and things like that, really well done in this photo, by the way. Another waterfront photo here. Uh, this one, I think a, a, a case, a case exists that everything that is not on the beach is negative space. I'm, I'm not gonna buy that entirely though the reason being because of the ships so and because of the clouds i'll argue that the water here definitely represents negative space and that the ships really provide a, a very nice visual interest and solid horizon line um i think the clouds in terms of negative space take away from this image's ability to meet that prompt However, take the clouds out of this image, and I think it's a less successful image as a photograph not trying to meet this prompt. So the point of all that is, very pleasing image. I really, really like the image structure a lot, where all of the things that are important are in this triangle on the bottom right. And because such a small part of the image has the important part of it, it gives a, the person and the dog way disproportionate amount of importance in the overall image, even though they're tiny little elements within their scene. So from a technical and creative perspective, very well executed image. All right, so let's take a look at the vines on the fence here. So the vertical lines of the fence, pretty close to vertical, a little bit crooked, not gonna nitpick that because that could easily be just irregularities in the way that the wood has swelled with age or something like that. So the point of that is vertical lines like this that are dark and thin with a white background, really neat visual background just as a baseline. So good use of the fence in that regard. The um, vines growing up it are also really interesting because you can see where they have grown previously and been trimmed back and have left marks on the paint of the fence. So there's 
a sense of time in this image as well as a negative space. Um, very pleasing image. You know, there's, there's really not a whole lot to say this could have been done differently or better. I think it, the use of basically what is two colors, white and green, is also really well done. And I, I think that this is very well composed and demonstrates a good eye for just looking at a scene and saying, how can I take that scene and make it visually interesting as a photograph? So as, I, as I've said before, there exists a difference between a, a beautiful scene and a beautiful photograph. There also exists a difference between a normal everyday scene and a beautiful photograph or a normal everyday photograph. A beautiful scene can easily become a boring snapshot and a boring everyday scene is very hard to make into a beautiful photograph and that was done successfully here. So I like in this uh, photo how the shape of the tunnel becomes negative space which creates a frame within a frame. So the shape of the tunnel exit is framing the scene that we see and the shadows in the foreground are to an extent framing the, the uh, bottom side of that. So we've got the play of negative space and we've got the play of frame. And I like also that the curve of the tunnel is contrary to the squareness of the uh, negative space. I'm sorry, of the image frame. So the negative space ends up becoming a deeper shape because it is square on the outside because that's the shape of the image and rounded on the inside because that's the shape of the tunnel. Uh, then placing the cat there or having the cat there by chance gives it incredible importance to the image and as, as a scene portrait is successful. The um, distracting elements of the cars in the background do take away from this image. So if they weren't there, uh, by if the owners had parked them elsewhere, I think the image would be more successful because what's going on right now is you've got this dark area with a green area inside of it and then this bright white and bright blue car that are just way out of place in the greenness. The cat needs to be out of place, but the cars become a distraction. So, uh, a lot of things going right here in terms of image structure and subject and subject placement. Just happenstance and where people chose to park didn't work in your favor. So this is a really interesting reflection image. I debated picking a reflection image for one of my negative space examples. Ultimately, I decided not to because I don't think, I don't think a reflection with data in it, with information in it, really constitutes negative space. If you'd had a cloudless sky, it would have definitely been negative space top and bottom. So in that regard, I think that the, the image doesn't quite meet the letter of the prompt quite as well as a different reflection might have. In terms of reflection images, it's really beautiful. And I love how the clouds in the water are a different color than the clouds in the sky. I also love how the gradation in the gradient in the sky is mirrored very well in the water, but with that same slightly pinkish warm tone that the clouds have taken on. And the stillness of the water, really, really good time to capture this image. It's very hard to get very still water for reflections. And then the image structure, which you have to take as a reflected structure. So you have to, you can't just look at the shoreline with the trees and the bushes, you have to look at the way that those image elements work together as a reflection of themselves. I think that part of the image in that shape is very interesting. This has a really strong use of, of shape and image subject, and I really enjoyed the use of solid angular lines in here to separate very dark from very black. The fact this image would not work if it weren't for the bird being exactly where it is. And the reason that the bird makes the image is because without the bird, it's a roof line and sky. With the bird, now the bird becomes part of the dark shape. So the bird becomes more than just a bird. 
but also the dark shapes, even though we know they're a roof line in the sky, in the, in the dark and the light shape, that that's what it is. Because of the bird, it takes on a different form. That one little tiny shape on the roof gives an entirely different shape to the overall roof and, and gives visual interest to the image that otherwise wouldn't be there. So um, very good use of picking an image where you've got your subject uh, right there. If this were an image you had the ability to, if, if I had taken this image and I were going back to take it again and there were a bird in the exact same spot, I might bide my time a little bit and wait for it to take off. And then as soon as it looked like it was going to take off, hit the shutter button, building a little bit of shutter lag, finger mo motion and shutter timing lag into it so that the bird's wings were spread and praying that I captured that well. Could do that five dozen times and capture it well once. That, that would be uh, very difficult to get. As it is, this shot is very, uh, very pleasing for the complexity that the bird gives to the interplay of the shapes and tones. So here's one that I really liked and I think does a lot to show what I've said in uh, many previous videos. When your subject faces you, or when your subject faces the viewer of your image, it is more engaging between the viewer of your image and your subject. It brings your, your viewer into your image more. And that's really going on here. This was one of the most visually interesting photos in this category because I kept being drawn back to the subject. And to that end, the only thing I would change about this image is the crop. I would pull the right side in so that it ends at that harsh shadow. Because in terms of negative space, that harsh shadow does kind of, if you just had the background with the way that the light's on it, that would make that whole background negative space. But in terms of um, image distraction, that pillar on the right side and the shadow that it casts do kind of take away from the subject because they add another element of texture and shape and tone to the image other than the subject. If you took those out, then your subject would be the only element with tone and texture and shape because the background, it would just become a rather abstract light field. So again, really captivating image. When we talk about, oh yeah, maybe move your crop line just a little bit, that's such a super minor tweak um, that the message behind that is you've really nailed all the stuff that's very, very hard to learn. And the minor stuff is just a matter of another person's opinion about where the edge of the frame should be. So for a while, when I looked at this image, I struggled with where is the negative space? Because we've got the trees in the background, which are fairly busy. And we've got the foreground of dirt and roots and rock, which is fairly busy. And then I realized, oh, the negative space is the person. And I found that to be very clever because it turned the idea of the prompt on its head from literally what everyone else did with this category. Every other submission says here's a large amount of negative space with a subject. In some way, shape, or form that happened with every submission except this one, where there is a tiny little amount of negative space and that negative space completely saps the human subject of form because it is just this inky blackness. And so that negative space really does become absolutely negative in that it removes form instead of giving form. So I, I looked at that and when I realized what was happening here, I thought that is a very, very smart use of this prompt in that image. So this, this image would probably have been a little bit more at home in a category on the use of light and shadow or black and white image uh, images in general. Uh, pleasing image structure. From a technical perspective, really good. You've got verticals and horizontals. Well, the horizontals are converging on a vertical point. The verticals are spot on, really good. Good use of light and shadow 
great access to the entire tonal spectrum of your medium. Uh, I might crop up on the bottom a little bit, not too much, but because only because the, the thinness, the horizontal thinness of this image, uh, you know what, as I look at it more, I wouldn't change the crop because I like how you have these wide buildings in this really narrow horizontal format. And then I think the people, the shadows of the people who are very tiny, they're doing a good uh, deal to give, um, give scale to this image. So here was another one that I initially looked at and thought, uh, does, it, does it meet the intent of the prompt? Um, and I'm still debating whether or not I think it does. I do think it does in the sense that this display case is completely surrounded in darkness. And so the negative space of the darkness around the display case sort of makes it isolated. It's as though it's floating in space, but not a part of space where you can see stars, right? So it's sort of like it's been removed from its reality and put into a, a, a plane where only it exists. So I think the negative space gives a lot of importance here to the display case because uh, nothing else exists except it. And I really like the way that the interior lighting of the display case is the only lighting used in this image. I think that's a very interesting and clever use of, of situational light. So very well done in that regard as well. So this looks like a triple exposure. No, is it a triple or a quadruple? I'm going to guess this is, this is a triple exposure. It looks like the hand is blocking the sunlight. And I'm going to say that is a single image because the power lines going through the image don't, they, they don't uh, show through the hand. If those were two separate exposures, you'd expect that they would show through the hand. Then there's one of the um, flowers. And I'm going to guess that the trees are a separate image as well. I think that's the third one. And I say that because it looks like the texture from the trees is coming through the hands in a couple of places, but it could just be that's a double exposure and then that's the leaves of the flowers. So um, this was one I went back and forth on as well about how well does it meet the, the concept of the negative space prompt because almost all of the image is information space. However, when you take a negative and you make a double or a triple exposure, you're underexposing intentionally, and that leaves a dearth of information across the entire negative. So the negative becomes a negative space in that there's not enough image information to make a single image. You've got to layer them. So in this that regard, each of the individual frames that were used to make this image were negative space frames in and of themselves. So uh, I thought that the use of the double exposure for this prompt was interesting. Um, still not 100% sure it met, met the objective of the prompt, but um, I, I like the concept of the, the concept of the image and the way that it was executed as well. Here's one that I think is the only pastel toned image of the entire contest. And it really, well, I think there were maybe a couple more. But this is a very strongly pastel toned image and the darkness of the silhouette uh, of the trees really draws that out. I love the golden tones of what I'm assuming is snow in the foreground and then the blue fading into red tones of what I'm assuming is the sunset in the background. And then the silhouettes, because they're so devoid of, of information, become shape and the information is the shape and so this is another one that we were where the entire image is negative space and the lack of image and data the lack of informational space is what creates the image uh the image's information so a really good and clever use of of negative and negative creating positive the positive being information and the negative and the negative being no information 
So with this one, this is a, a challenging one because there are, again, uh, the negative, we, we've seen in this video a bunch of places where the negative space has stuff in it. So it's not truly negative space in the sense that having the light fixtures in the ceiling make that information space. Now we do have a large white wall on the left and the statue is cast into darkness well enough that that statue becomes a negative space in the image. And so uh, this is this was a, a struggle for me because I was trying to figure out is the negative space the wall or is the negative space the statue? And if the negative space is the statue, then does that make the subject of the photo the lights on the ceiling? Well, that doesn't seem to make sense. It seems like the, the subject should be the statue. So the statue, so the subject becomes a negative space, which uh, we, you know, a couple of times that was what happened with this, with this uh, uh, prompt. So um, at any rate, those were some of the things I was working through with this image. I, were, I, I like the downward up angle on this shot a lot. I think that the hero shot, that's what we call it here in the US anyway, because you know if you, if you think mentally about your heroes, you think about looking up to them. So if the camera replicates that upward angle, then the um, heroes, the, the hero shot, that's how it gets its name. Very popular in things like baseball cards and sports photography. Uh, there are a lot of political photos where the, um, the subjects are taken with an, from, from a ca camera angle that's below the subject, things like that. So I think that works really well with this subject. Might be too much of an upward angle with this subject. So were I to go back and try to take, if, if this were my photo and I went back to try to take it again, what I would try to do is stand over to the side a little bit more. So rotate from this perspective counterclockwise, maybe in the order of 60 to 90 degrees. So um, if, if this is noon, what we're looking at right here, maybe go somewhere in the, the 1030 to 9 p.m. range on a clock face. And that would get some of the lighting out of the photo and then bring the camera up a little bit so that the background becomes more of the wall. I'm assuming that the entire wall is blank. Maybe the wall isn't blank and this wouldn't work for that reason. But if you rotate it a bit, brought the camera up a bit, you'd still have a nice upward hero shot and you'd catch a little bit more of the profile. And that would give a little bit more visual interest to the face part of the shape here. So, cause right now that's, that's lost completely in shadow. Um, so close, I mean, a pretty good use of the prompt. Ultimately, I think this is a good use of the, a good match for the prompt, uh, for the spirit of it. Uh, just needs a couple of different things to take out some of the distracting ceiling elements that take away from the viewer's ability to focus on the statue, uh, which is the subject of the photo. So this last one before we get to the top five is a very shallow depth of field image. Uh, it's not shot wide open. You can tell looking at the uh, specular highlight in the middle of the photo. Um, Kind of guess this is a fast lens stop down to roundabout f4, and uh, it's my best guess for you. Focused at its closest focusing distance, I couldn't tell you what it's taking a picture of. So, the 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 blurry area is definitely negative space, and then the space is to the right side of that central line of texture, which I'm, you know, I'm gonna guess that's probably a car's hood, but I could be wrong about that. Um, at any rate, those, those flatter areas are also negative space. And so they, all of those combine to, with the texture of that center line to make that center line the, data, the informational space that is the image. So the ima this is one of those cases where the image couldn't exist without the negative space. So um, ultimately, 
The top five were just super, su well, top six, because the winner was in this cat, overall winner was in this group, were super, super strong images. And um, so at any rate, though, uh, this image, I think, if there had been an abstract category, may have been a little bit more at home in the abstract category where the point of an abstract image is to take a thing and photograph it in a way that it doesn't look like the thing and it's hard to tell what it is. So, all right, so let's get to the top five in the negative space category. We're gonna start here with this shot from, uh, of a person with an umbrella uh, in a rainstorm in, in the negative space. And, and what I really love about this is that the negative space, the way that it interacts with the information space. So the negative space is a destination for the, where this person is walking to. So uh, this was a really captivating image. And by the way, all five of these images we're gonna talk about here, which are the top five, they include the overall contest winner. All of these at one point or another, I thought th this is the best in the category. And, and this one could easily take the whole contest. All five of these were so close to um, perfect that it was really, really hard to pick this category. I spent the most amount of time picking this category, these five specifically. So at any rate, um, this was a really stunning image. It was one of the ones that has, throughout the entire contest, stood out as really fantastic and, and has really resonated in my mind as I've thought about the images from this contest. So if if there is a, the reason that this is not, say, the overall winner for the entire contest is down to a very simple technical issue, which is that the verticals are not corrected. So if you look on the left, the concrete pillar, it's not perfectly vertical. And if you look along the base, the fence line is not horizontal. Tilting those two things would, uh, would have, would have changed the entire outcome of this contest. And the reason for that is because when verticals and horizontals are off alignment, unless it's, if it's a little bit like this, then it looks like an accident. If it's a major difference and it contributes to the overall sense of the photo, then it looks intentional. In this case, it looks like it was uh, just an accidental way that the camera was held. So just correcting that with a really minor crop wouldn't change the atmosphere of the image in any way, shape or form, but would uh, make those two elements, the, the concrete post over on the left side and the fence on the bottom, uh, and also the roof line along the top, would have done a lot to make them look like they were all working in unison with the negative space in the image. And one of the things here that is done superbly, superbly well with the negative space is the way that the raindrops are in front of it. So it gives depth to the negative space, and because we, there is the, the roof line, which we would need to see a little bit of anyway in this image, no matter how it's cropped. It means that the negative space is a destination. So there's an interaction between the subject and the negative space. And that was a really, really fantastic use of negative space for this category. This next one is another one of playing with color and darkness. And basically this is another one that's a functionally an abstract image and um, completely dark, completely informationless foreground, perfect horizon line, and then another sunset tone. Um, so the, what separates this from some of the other ones we saw in this vein is that this one doesn't even try to hide that it's all negative space. It says, this image is negative space. Everything is negative space. I'm gonna lay it out there like I'm playing poker with my cards face up. And I really love the way that the darkness of, in the lower part of this image amplified the colors in the top part of the image. So here is our second place winner for the category. And I really loved this shot. It has a very good use of color and gradient and a very standard uh, sunset gradient, but it is uh, just fantastic with this photo. And then in the foreground, we have these basically information void blocks. So we can tell a little bit 
that there are buildings and we can see a little bit of the information in them, but it's a great use of negative space to frame that gradient in the background. And then there's a couple of trees that give a little bit of an organic feel to the image, but um, I think realistically this is a just fantastic use of lines and harmony and color and everything in this image is really working together to contribute very well to a, an absolutely wonderful overall photo. The winner in this category is this shot here. And uh, this was a really, really hard one for me to pick because it, I can't tell what, first off, can't tell if the person's walking towards us or away from us, but ultimately I decided that didn't really matter. This is a photo of a person in fog or smoke who is either waiting for a, tr a train or a bus early in the morning or just has departed one and is going home. I think the use of the uh, lighting in this image is absolutely incredible. There's some interior light and then there's a little bit of exterior light and that's all that's used to give this, uh, to give the negative space shape and form. I mean, realistically, the negative space in this image, you can't tell what it is, but because of the lights, we can. We can tell that it's an apartment building. So that's how we know that the subject is either coming or going from home. The sense of scene and atmosphere and mood in this image is really exemplary and absolutely wonderfully well executed. And this image is uh, an absolute joy to look at and uh, just one of the most perfect photos that was submitted for this whole contest. And that brings us to the overall contest winner. And it's this shot, which is just spectacular. For, from a technical standpoint, uh, th this is an amazing photo. This is a really hard exposure to get. The fog would blow out all of the data and then, of course, there's these area, this area of deep shadows over on the left. And then a person who's doing a thing, I couldn't tell you what that thing is, laundry or catching fish, who knows. Uh, but there's a person doing a thing which gives visual interest and scale. Uh, really, just, I spent so long staring at this photo and, and wishing I had taken it because it is really incredible. I think it's, I think it's better than anything I did last year. Um, in fact, I would say that about most of the winners from this whole contest. Uh, this one especially is really staggeringly good. So let's talk about some of the things that are going on here. We have this dark area over on the left of the tree and the rocks and the reflection of the tree, which gives a nice tonal range to the, to the image. Without that, this image falls apart because without that tonal range, it just becomes fog, right? Now we have that person who is in and of themselves encapsulating almost the entire tonal range of the image because they're wearing a dark and light outfit. She has dark hair. And um, so at any rate, she's like a, a little microcosm of the entire tonal range of the image. But because it's a person now, there's something for the viewer to relate to. Oh, there's a person doing a thing. And so it becomes a more interesting photo in that way. Plus the person adds scale. So we can tell how large the rocks and tree are, but it also tells us how far away the fairy is in the background. And the fairy really makes this image uh, very, very deep in terms of uh, physical depth. Fog, as we've talked about in this, these reviews, in this contest uh, photo reviews, takes away depth from your image. So it's nice to have something in the fog to restore part of that depth. And that's what that fairy does. And it's a four or five story tall fairy. So it's a pretty big uh, ship. And so we can tell from the person in the foreground that it's fairly far back, which means that this is kind of a thin fog. And so we can just barely see it for the distance. The fairy also serves to give us a perfectly horizontal horizon line. And then the rest of the image, the water has a little bit of texture, but the sky is completely devoid of texture. The whole rest of the image is negative space. And without every one of those discrete com uh, components in the image, the entire image would fail. If any one of those aspects was absent, then this would 
not be a wonderful photo. So this is really showing how, how important composition is, how important visual interest is, and how important it is to pick the right moment. If this photo had been taken three seconds earlier or later, the fairy might only have been partly in the frame, and then it would have been cutting through the person's head. The photo really wouldn't have been successful. Or it might have been half off the frame to the right side, which would have made the photo, again, less successful. Or the person might have been facing a different direction, like looking out at the fairy, which would have made this photo less successful. The fact that the person is doing her thing without any mind for the fairy gives weight to the person and the action because the largest individual image component in this frame is the fairy. But the most interesting image component, the person, is paying it no mind whatsoever, which means the person is actually the most important part of the, of the image from a visual component perspective. Uh, actually, from any perspective, the person's the most important part of the image. So everything revolves around the person as well. And it doesn't hurt any that the person is on the intersection of two rule of thirds lines. So very solid compositional structure in that regard as well. So everything in this photo going completely right, not a single flaw. And um, just, you know, this, this photo stuck with me so much from the moment I saw it, I thought, ooh, that's a really strong contender for the best of the best of the whole contest. And uh, I, I knew as soon as I saw it, it was going to be very hard to beat, and it ended up being impossible to beat. It is just so in, such an incredibly perfect shot. So very well done. Very well done to everybody who entered, and I really, really hope that all of the critiques and the feedback are very helpful in getting your mind thinking about your own work and showing you how to look at your own work empirically with a little bit of removal from it so that you can continue evaluating your own work and continue to the, the process that all photographers, all photographers go through their entire life of continually improving and continually learning how to look at their own work to improve it. Thank you everyone very much for participating and I will uh, see you in the next videos.